Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, and Sacred Geography, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Sunday, May 28th, around 9 p.m. Mountain Time, 2023. Popoca about 70 miles west of Mexico City, has been involved in an uptick in volcanic activity over the last several weeks, and it continues today in a big way. This puff of ash and soot is well, extending all the way up to 21,000 feet into the atmosphere. But the big story, happy Memorial Day, honoring all those who served and keep us free. Well, a lot of that's crumbling, so keep calm. It's boom time. Take a look at New Mexico and northern Texas, the nexus of the Schmexis. Heavy thunderstorms tonight as the sun sets Isolated strong to severe storms are possible through sunset across eastern New Mexico, as well as Texas, the nexus of the Schmexis. Storms capable of producing damaging winds, large hail, and cloud-to-ground lightning that could light fires. Uh, we did have a tornado watch just pop up moments ago in eastern New Mexico, so heads up. Unsettled along the southeast coast. Scattered severe storms across the plains. A low pressure along the coast of the southeastern U.S. will produce gusty winds, dangerous surf, rip currents, and locally heavy rainfall through Monday. Elsewhere, isolated to severe scattered thunderstorms are possible over parts of the plains, while red flag warnings are in effect for portions of North Dakota and Minnesota. Say it ain't soda, but it's true. It's windy up there. So please don't flick your cigarette butts out the window and watch those barbecues. Let's take a quick look at the GFS model, and you can see that line of storms moving through the plains tonight. Could see a little uptick in... Uh, as the sun sets in South Dakota, Nebraska, as well as North Texas, we showed you where those storms are. And that system along the southeast coast is going to break up tomorrow. It's going to be mostly rainy in, it looks like, Virginia. So North Carolina, South Carolina could be in the clear for Memorial Day with a little few pop-up storms here by Wednesday and some severe weather threats in the center of the country popping up as well. So stay tuned for more boom. Let's take a look at the smoke map. It seems like we've got some more fires that just blew up here up in the northern regions of Canada. Yeah, we're, they're, they're blowing now in a region where there's very few people, but some large fires popping up after we put out the fires um, in Alberta and BC. Most of the fires, there was like 70 here. There are none being reported. We have pop-up fires now in Saskatchewan, and uh, what is this territory up here? The Northwest Territories are burning as well as the Yukon, so we're hoping for precipitation to quench that, but the good news is that that smoke is not affecting anyone in the lower 48 in a big way. Just a little plume there puffing in, but we do have fires popping up in the lower 48. Take a look at how many fires are on the East Coast. This is the most I've ever seen, but we do have fires now popping up in the West Coast. Two of them, we have one in Washington, about five in Oregon currently, all small fires, nothing that the media can fearmonger about. And we have six to eight small fires in the San Joaquin Valley all the way up through Chico. So very early start to the wildfire season with really good precipitation forecast for our future, especially with the monsoon, El Nino taking over. We should be getting some nice moisture out down here in the dry regions. Now, an earthquake earlier today in Colombia, about 12 hours ago, a magnitude 5.3 earthquake occurred in Atatoka around 1045 COT on May 28th. Now, the quake occurred in northern central Colombia around 1045 the epicenter was three kilometers north of Aratoka. The tremor occurred at a depth of 158 kilometers, which is quite deep, which is why I don't know they're really warning anyone, but officials are temporarily shutting down transportation infrastructure in the tremor zone to check for damage. They're also, uh, what were they also saying? An abundance of caution. Consider vacating multi-story buildings where shaking is occurring until authorities can confirm their structural integrity. So apparently a lot of crappy buildings in Colombia, similar, well, to other regions in the world. Seismic update, no quakes of note. There is that Colombian quake at 5.3.
We have some activity in Hawaii. We're waiting for Kilauea to re-erupt. But worldwide, all is quiet, except for Popo. Let's take a look and listen to the action. Now, this is the quake from earlier today, and we'll just run it through for a few minutes because it is quite spectacular, only making its way 21,000 feet up into the atmosphere, but still could be putting huge amounts of ash into the local communities like we saw last week in Puebla. And I'm just gonna bring it forward a little to show some of the power, hours of powers of that eruption. And you can see it ever increasing there. Quite a bit of, of uh, volcanic ash there being shot up. Take a look, here is a few minutes later. It really helps to have a sped up version of this. Let me just come over here and see if we can uh, bring this up a bit. I just doubled it. So we're at 2x now. In HD, it's trying its best to keep up, but you can just see the magnitude of the ash from this eruption. All the links will be below uh, to everything we talked about tonight. So check them out. We're a Y Volcano News Update. We've got Popo, Reventador, Livotolo. Livotolo puffing to 7,000 feet, Popo to 21. Let me just watch that. Reventador to 15. And Semaru, Chivalouche, Rincon de la Vieja. I hope I have that video pulled up. Chivalouche puffing today to uh, 14,000 feet. Sabankaya to 22. Popo earlier from that puff was 17. And let's take a look at Rincon de la Vieja. We're over here at Oppenheimer Ranch Project on Twitter, at Diamond the Dave. Links will be below. Please follow us here. And you can see a video of Rincon de la Vieja's eruption from Thursday. <laughs> Clearly, someone's screaming. And we'll rewatch the full replay. Now, my, my question is, what is that screaming going to do for you? <laughs> this is a Frio magmatic eruption. It is uh, one of the more spectacular eruptions because what happens here is the magma mixes with the groundwater and causes an explosion. Similar to Hunga Tonga, but that was a exponential version of this, and it's called a Sertsian eruption, which is not happening here. This is just a Frio magmatic uh, explosion when the lava connected with large amounts of groundwater and went boom, literally. Let's take a listen. <laughs> no! 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 I can't get enough of her. Space Weather News, uh, we had a small jump in telemetry just about, let's say, 12 hours ago, and that pushed the KP index up slightly, but only up to KP 3.5, so not even close to any good geomagnetic activity or aurora. The sun is extremely quiet during solar max, and no one knows why, except that we've been reporting on this for a decade. And they all should know, but they just walk around and act stupid. As we look at the latest HMI intensity, there are plenty of sunspots that could be providing activity on the surface, but all is quiet on the sun. We're in B range at solar max. It's embarrassing. We do have a coronal hole, albeit a southern one, that could be facing Earth in the next few days and be geo-effective at the end of the week. So we'll keep a close eye on that. It could bring us some auroras 
into next weekend, so stay tuned for the Aurora forecast. Scientists warn that light pollution could make stars invisible in two decades. Now here's the only problem. In most cities, stars are already invisible, and they've been that way for decades. This article is a shartical, and almost all media sources, dozens of them, have picked up on it and have repeated the same stupid thing, in which they warn that we won't be able to see stars from Earth in 20 years. This is ridiculous. I live in a dark sky area. There are many dark sky areas where there are no people, and we don't expect any more people in 20 years to be coming here and lighting lights. That's how dark it is. So if you want to see stars, all you have to do is get out of a city. And if you've lived in a city your entire life, you know what I'm talking about. You can't see a thing. Ding, ding. And people that come out here for the first time that live in cities, their mind is blown. Meet the lunar rover that will venture to the moon's south pole. These rovers are shaping the future of lunar exploration. Obviously, our technology is much better than it has been in the past. But at the heart of human nature is a desire to explore. Nowhere is that more evident than our quest to journey beyond Earth. This week, the X-2 mission carried four travelers to the International Space Station, including former NASA astronaut Peggy Whitson and stem cell researcher Rihanna Barnawi, the first woman from Saudi Arabia to travel to space. Virgin Galactic also returned its supersonic plane to the edge of space for the first time since 2021 as it went bankrupt, kind of like a joyride. <laughs> and preparations are underway as humans prepare to return to the lunar surface in 2025. And they're going to get a little help from some robotic explorers. And here's a picture of one. Engineers are testing a prototype version of the Viper at NASA's Ames Research Center in Mountain View, California. So that is the look of some of the new rovers that have 360 capability. Now, we bring this story to you because it's fantastic. A 1 in 10 million bison is born at Wyoming State Park. And this is a rare white calf and a white bison. Beautiful. Take a look at the bison and the baby bison. They are albino and 1 in 10 million. Is it a sign of things to come? I hope so. Target loses $10 billion in 10 days as stocks fall following a boycott over their sick, sadistic children's clothing. Yeah, I said it. Uh, and I'll stick with it. State Farm, to stop accepting homeowner insurance applications in California due to wildfires and construction costs. Can you imagine the exodus that is coming? out of California. They've already lost millions of people in the last few years, and the rest of them will be leaving now. Do you know about the powerful and proliferative and formidable Purse Lane? I think we did a video on it. If not, I will do one in a few weeks when it pops up out of the ground here in our most inhospitable regions. Now, what is considered a weed to some may be a powerful medicine to others, or a very important survival food. Valued in many cultures worldwide and sold at top dollar in many countries, this herbaceous succulent is thought of as an invasive weed in many states, and they actually pay you to kill it. That's what's wrong with the world. When in fact, per slain, this beautiful succulent could provide an array of vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants to anyone smart enough to eat it. Its omega-3 content rivals any other green land plant and often grows almost uncontrollably on disturbed areas. So if you didn't know, harvest your purslane and get healthy. Now we're planning a trip this weekend to McConkie Ranch petroglyphs, which are fantastic. If you don't know about it, we're going to be there soon and we're going to document some of the largest petroglyphs in Utah, and they should be fantastic. The place is in a remote area, and not many people go there, so hopefully we get better pictures than these. And this is all on the way to the Camas Prairie, 
which is in Idaho, where some of the where the largest geoglyphs in North America have gone unnoticed forever. And we're going to go do some drone surveys. This entire area is seven square miles. Well, actually, it's even bigger than that. Just to walk it is about nine miles. So we're going to go and look at some of the oldest geoglyphs in North America that people had just forgot about. And it seems like they all center around these plus-shaped ponds, and there's rabbits, there's ears of corn and rabbits and other geoglyphs that have weathered through millennia. And there are dozens of them all over the place, even older ones and newer ones. So we're going to go over and document this area. We're going to talk to some of the local tribes and we're going to see what we can do to secure this area as one of the largest geoglyph locations in all of North America and try to get to the bottom of what they were trying to tell us or what they were symbolizing here in the Camas Prairie Centennial Marsh Wilderness of Idaho. Should be a fantastic um, trip where we do recognizance to prepare us for the trip later in the summer that we will invite you to. So stay tuned for more details. And that's a boom to knowledge. Please share this video as we are shadow banned on YouTube because they don't want the general public to actually know what we're talking about. Become a Patreon, support the work we do. We love you, be safe, hit that thumbs up. It helps with the Al Gore rhythm.